Kyrie Irving is mad and he's mad at the media? This clickbait era we live in has Kyrie upset. He's not happy with the state of how the NBA sells their product. They sell gossip. As great as the game is today with highlight dunks, unbelievable three-pointers, top-of-the-line athletes, and legendary all-time players, let's call it what it is. In 2019, the biggest draw for the NBA night in, night out is the game of what if. NBA free agency has become a spectacle like no other. The possibility of all stars joining teams and competing together either makes you really happy as a fan or it really upsets you. Either way, it draws some type of emotion out of you. Kyrie personally knows what it's like to be a part of a team with this amount of thrill and scrutiny. In 2014, LeBron James decided to leave Miami, go back home to Cleveland to join a young star in the making with all the potential in the world. When Andrew Wiggins for Kevin Love trade later, it put the Cavaliers in prime positions to make three straight postseason runs following the 2017 finals which ended up with the Cavs losing to the Warriors in five games one of the members of this big three well he wanted out for reasons we still don't know Kyrie Irving demanded a trade out of Cleveland Irving would end up being traded to a team that technically wasn't even on his list of requested trade destinations the Boston Celtics it was a match made in heaven one of the best young point guards in the league with one of the best young head coaches in the league and Brad Stevens. In 2017, Kyrie described his relationship with Brad Stevens as perfect. Brad fits in terms of that because he's an intellectual mind and an intellectual human being. It was something I was unbelievably craving in terms of what I wanted for my career. As the Celtics went on to finish number one in the Eastern Conference during the regular season, and even make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, they did have to finish their season without their all-star point guard Kyrie Irving, who went down with a knee injury March 11th. That probably was the best thing that could ever happen to those young Celtics, but also the worst thing that ever happened to those young Celtics who finished their season technically without their two all-star caliber players in Kyrie and also Gordon Hayward, who got injured opening night of the 2017 NBA season. The good was the youngins were forced to grow up. The bad was they were just 48 minutes away from making it to the finals without Kyrie and Gordon Hayward. As the Celtics entered the 2018-2019 season, finally at full strength, expectations were high. So far, the team has underwhelmed. Trailing the Indiana Pacers in the standings, the Indiana Pacers don't even have their all-star Victor Oladipo, and there are no other all-star caliber players on their roster. The struggles have boiled over within the organization, almost fights, beats between Marcus Morris and Jalen Brown, Multiple player only meetings and call outs during post game interviews have many questioning is this very talented Celtics team even ready to compete for a championship this season or not? And is Kyrie still happy in Boston like he once was when he was first acquired? Right before the season, at a Celtics pep rally, Kyrie announced to a Boston crowd that he planned on being around in that Boston green long term this is what he said if you guys will have me back i plan on re-signing here that energy has changed as a matter of fact when he was asked about his upcoming nba free agency decision last month Kyrie backed off that assurance he once gave the celtics at the beginning of the season when specifically asked if he had changed his mind on re-signing with the celtics he said ask me again july 1. in the same presser he went on to say at the end of the day, I'm gonna do what's best for me and my career. I don't owe anyone shish kebab. After a video of Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving seemingly just talking during All-Star Weekend went viral, many fans somehow some way started to speculate were the two discussing their upcoming NBA free agent decision in the midst of NBA All-Star Weekend for the public and cameras to see them. That sounds crazy. Anywho, the two guys can become free agents and it is rumored that the two have considered joining the New York Knicks together. After that viral video, Kyrie had had enough. 
and he's tired of the speculation and he just wants to focus on basketball. He angrily lashed out at the media with comments like, I don't dissect anything, I disconnect. So anybody's story or social media, like I'm completely off it. I just don't have the care for it. It ruins locker rooms. It ruins the confidence in people and it's just a fictitious way of being validated in the world. So it really doesn't matter to me. A reporter asked Kyrie straight up and down, do you have anything to say about the video to kind of pour water on it? Kyrie said to what? The reporter asked him straight up and down, do you want to say anything about the video to kind of chill it out? Because people are obviously talking about it, Kyrie. Kyrie said, what does it matter to me? I don't have a private life when I'm out there in the NBA. Somebody wants to take a video and I mean, it is what it is, pour water on it. I'm a human being talking to another best friend of mine. Like it's just crazy. This is the stuff that just doesn't make the league fun. It's just crazy. I guess that's what you wanted, huh? The reporter said it's over the internet. Kyrie said, is the internet real in your life? It's my life, right? It's two people talking, having a conversation. If this was the real world, would it be anybody else's business? But it's a video of somebody else assuming what we're talking about, right? Making an opinion about it. So why would I care about it? Why does this have an impact on my life? Why are you asking me those type of questions about cooling it off for what? I don't get it. Okay, Kyrie was very upset during that exchange with the Boston media the other day. In a more subtle interview with probably the biggest one-on-one -on -one reporter in the NBA right now, ESPN's own Rachel Nichols, Kyrie explained his comments a little better and a little more thorough on why he's so upset with just the social media clickbait era and the media's part in it as well. He said a lot of people don't realize on the outside that a lot of those things that are said get into the locker room. A lot of those things that are put in headlines get into the locker room. Media has broken up locker rooms. It's been done before where you say something and it's misinterpreted and instead of addressing it with the person, an individual, like human interaction, you read it on your phone. You read it on a text. Someone says to you, hey, did you see what that person said about you? And it's your teammate. You're like, I didn't hear that. You hold back. You don't say anything to them. And then throughout the season, it ends up coming out again. It's just how life is supposed to go. It's a unique position, but I'm appreciative that I can have this understanding now. It's fun, but at the same time, it's energy taxing. Yeah, I think three things regarding Kyrie Irving, right? First and foremost, I don't care where his Boston Celtics team ends up in the Eastern Conference. They're still a very dangerous team with a lot of talent. My feeling is they're not gonna be able to get out of the Eastern Conference, but if they somehow got hot behind the back of Kyrie Irving, right? And they make it to the NBA Finals, to me, they are the team most equipped to give the Golden State Warriors a run for their money. I'd be willing to give the Celtics two games against the Warriors. That's more than any other team in the Eastern Conference right now for me against that tough Golden State Warriors team. The second thing is, regarding Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, man, these are probably the two most, I'm not gonna call them weird, but two of the most different NBA superstars that we've ever seen. They kinda go by the beat of their own drum. They're not the typical guys. They don't add up to a lot of people out there. I'm not calling them weird. They're just different in their own way. And people don't have to be how we want them to be. Decisions that we will make in certain situations are sometimes not the decisions that others would make in certain situations. And we can't get mad because people are different from what we would do in a certain situation. That doesn't make them weird. That just makes them them. Third thing and the most important thing, as you consistently see Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant ironically lash out at the media throughout the season, I think the reason why they're so upset is because they're, there's probably a little bit of truth in the possibilities of both of these guys teaming up and playing basketball somewhere, I don't know, probably New York, right? I think there's some truth in it. Will they end up leaving their respective teams, Boston and Golden State? Maybe. Maybe not, but I do think there's some talk about it, right? I do believe they've gotten on the phone or communicated and did dinner or talked about it at the gym somewhere, not before the All-Star game. I do believe these two guys have talked about it and it's something that intrigues both of them. And I think that's why they get so frustrated with the media because if they are about to make this big time decision where they're both will be leaving good situations to potentially go to great 
or bad situations, I do think it's frustrating to them that their spot has kind of got blown up and all these people, including the media, are asking, asking them consistent questions about a decision that could potentially change their lives for the better or for the worse. I think that's probably the biggest thing why they keep lashing out at the media, blaming social media, is because there's probably a little truth in the chances of these two top of the line elite basketball players join each other and playing together come 2019, 2020. We now post a new NBA 2K video every time the clock hits nine. That's right, Mr. Telefero, NBA 2K, two times every day. Remember, for more gameplay from your boy, make sure you check me out on Twitch at it's Mr. Telefero. Yickety! I came from nothing, but I want everything God has for me. I interview celebrities. I talk sports. I still represent the culture. I got the kids. They who are now tuned in. Tuned in. Yo, we locked in right now, Mr. Telefair. Mr. Telefair. Mr. Telefair. Mr. Telefair. Shout out to Mr. Telefair. You're watching Mr. Telefair TV. Mr. Telefair TV? Here with the Triple B's. You can't do nothing but win.